Welcome Algebra 2. This is section 2.7, Absolute Value Functions and Graphs. The essential question is, what are the differences between the shape of graphs of y equals x and y equals the absolute value of x? Let's begin. So let's graph the function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So another way to write that is y equals the absolute value of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in values for x and, and figure out what the corresponding y values are. So let's do 0, negative 1, negative 2, and let's go positive 1 and positive 2, and we'll go negative 3 and positive 3. So actually, let's just do that in order. Let's go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So for absolute value, it just turns the number into a positive number. So the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, positive 2, positive 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So plotting those points, negative 3, 3 is going to be here. Negative 2, 2 is here. Negative 1, 1 is here. 0, 0 is there. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So it looks like I got some straight lines there. I got lines going out like this. Oops, can't draw straight. Going out like this and out like this. So it's some shape that kind of looks like this. So straight lines, that's the function f of x equals the absolute value of x. Let's see what happens when I change that up. So th this is that function f of x equals absolute value of x. What happens when I go absolute value of x minus 4? Well, let's graph that. I'm going to use those same points. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So the first thing, if you're plugging in negative 3, absolute value of negative 3 minus 4 will be 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. Absolute value 2, so 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And the absolute value of negative 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3. And 0 minus 4 will be negative 4. And so plug in positive 1, which should be negative 3, and it's negative 2, and then negative 1. So let's plot those points here. Um, use, let's, use, let's use red. So negative 3, negative 1 is going to be right here. Oops, that's negative 1, so it's right here. Negative 2, negative 2 is right here. Negative 1, negative 3 is here, and 0, negative 4 is here. 1, negative 3 is here, 2, negative 2, and 3, negative 1 is right here. So the graph of that is going to look like this shape. And I'll keep going in this direction. So what's the difference from the parent function? So we're talking parent function again. The parent function was what we just graphed. F of x equals the absolute value of x. That's the simplest absolute value function you can get, and that's this blue function here. The, this child function is absolute value x minus 4. What changed right here? Well, it looks like we went down 3. So the difference is it's all down, not 3, it's down 4. And that makes sense because we did this minus 4. Um, this, the, the transformations that we did last section work the same way for absolute values. And here's a, fun, here's a table of that. The family of the absolute value functions, our parent is y equals the absolute value x, and we did a vertical translation. So we translated it down four units because that was a minus four right here. So translating down k units, or four units, will actually move the function down. And all these are very similar to that last, the last table from the last section. So write them down. All right, moving on from that. So the general form of an absolute function. So it's going to be y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Well, what does this a, h, and k mean? So the a is going to be your stretch of your function. So that's, that's just like what it was before. It makes it taller or makes it shorter. Um, h and k actually stand for the vertex. The vertex, which is the coordinates, it, it forms an ordered pair h comma k. So h is our x, and then their k is the y. And the axis symmetry of that absolute value function is going to be a line that's x equals h. So just a reminder, what is the vertex? It's the maximum or minimum point of the graph. So the vertex in, in this case right here is, is this dot at 0, 0, the origin, because that's the minimum value of the absolute value function. The axis of symmetry, it's a vertical line that goes through the vertex and dry, it divides the graph in half. It makes it symmetrical. So this brown line right here is actually our axis of symmetry in this case. This is at x equals 0. And the vertex, I'll write that down, is at the origin, so it's at 0, 0. So that axis symmetry cuts in half, vertex the lowest or highest point. All right, let's try some examples. So what is the graph of the function? Pause the video. 
All right, so let's do this. When it's a graph the function, that means we want to graph this. So I'm going to make a table, x, y. And uh, that wasn't straight. So let's figure out some values for x. I'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's see if those work. So you plug it in negative 2 for x, what are you going to get for y? You can get absolute value negative 2 plus 2. So it's going to be 2 plus 2, which is 4. Absolute value negative 1 is going to be 1 plus 2, which be 3. If it's 0, it's going to be 2. If 1, it's going to be 3 and 4. So let's plot those. I got the value negative 2, 4. So x is negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 3, 0, 2. 1, 3, and 2, 4. So it looks like we form this kind of shape. Oops, that shouldn't be a curved line. So it should be a straight line going out this way. And we should have a straight line going out this way. You can do better than me, probably. So if you want to draw a straight line, you can do more points. It helps you be a little bit more accurate. But that looks pretty good. So how is this graph different from the parent function? Well, the parent function is y equals the absolute value of x. I, I know this graph has been shifted up two points. So how is this different? Um, it's been shifted up two units. So this this plus two actually shifts it up two units and that's what my graph looks like. All right, try the next example. Pause the video. All right, let's try this. Without graphing, what are your vertex and the axis of symmetry of the graph? Y equals three times the absolute value of x minus two plus four. How is the parent function transformed? So without graphing, what's my vertex? Well, my vertex, if I'm going to the Back to the general form, it's the minus h and a plus k. So it's a minus 2. So this is my h, and this is my k. So the k is easy. That's going to be 4. And then my h, since it's minus h, minus 2. So my h has to be positive 2. So my vertex is at 2, 4. What's the axis of symmetry? I'm going to just abbreviate it AOS. Well, it's just a line x equals your h value, so x equals 2. So there's my vertex axis of symmetry. How is the parent function transformed? So without graphing it, we describe how it's going to be transformed. Well, this plus 4 is going to make the trans I'm right, transformed. It's going to make the graph go up to, it's not up to, up 4. So it's translated up 4, and this minus 2 right here, well, let's go back to that table. What does that minus 2 make it? So minus h, when it's minus, it translates to the right h units. So it's going to be going to the right two units. So it's going to be up four, right two. And this three, well, what is this three? That's going to make it taller or skinnier. So it's transformed up four, right two, and taller. So if I were to graph this, I know the vertex has to go up four and to the right two. And it's taller. So just to do a rough sketch, I don't know what it actually is. It's going to look a little skinnier, and it's going to kind of look like this. A little skinnier than the parent, which would be a little, which would be really wide. And it's up four and to the right two. So your graph's going to roughly look like that. That's it.